We're gonna play Zombie Army Trilogy after. All the shenanigans with batteries. We're playing on what difficulty again? You remember what we did last time? Marksman and like two or three players. Oh shit. Maybe I should look in my VODs. Select chapter, uh, <clears throat> episode one, level one, right? No. Don't want that. No, it's episode one, level four. Mmm. <laughs> Uh, difficulty... Marksman, was it? E. Enemy setup was for three players, I think, right? Or was it two? Yeah. Uh, the highest war was too much. Four, still a bit too much. So it's, I think it was three. Alright, hold on. I'm just, just gonna check my VODs. Oh crap, the freaking game is not capturing. My bad. Oof. I'm a, I'm an idiot. Again, sorry. <laughs> and again, thank you, thank you so much again, Moosey, and also Slayer Dude who's gone to bed now for educating me. I am a pleb. Enjoy your lasagna, Universal. Zombie Army Trilogy. Five hours and 49 minutes we spent to beat three... Levels. Oh my god, I'm getting the YouTube ad block wine on my own video, by the way. Yeah, I had that for like two weeks and then it disappeared. For me, at night it comes back and then the next day, like, <clears throat> it disappears again. Just like, uh, I don't know, like temporarily turn off uBlock mm. so I can see my own fucking video. I can't watch my own video because ad block. Stupid shit. Fuck. Where is the menu? Okay, after two hours we were still on level one. Mm. Um There's no substitute for your own research. Not chat or chat GPT, but I think you did the smart thing for now and are definitely erroring on the side of caution. I mean, you know, there's just things in life that I haven't learned yet. So it's like, I'm just glad to get educated from time to time. So that I can learn in the future, like, oh, when my batteries just run out, okay, dispose of it properly. Okay, bleeding out. Why is my own video not fucking loading? Okay. Enemy set up three players. Yeah, that's what we did. I think that was fine. Or not. No, we got to the church. Because I, I remember we got to the church last time, right? And then we failed at the church because it was too hard with Hans. Mm. But I think yeah, I think it was three players that we did. Mm. Yeah, that, that is fine. I think. <laughs> I hope.
but yeah, like. Yeah, we are learning from different things, but like, mostly for I like learning from other people, I guess. So like having people in chat who know things is like a good source to learn things from. Mm. Chat GPT I use a lot as well, but I do take a bit of caution with that because plenty of times Chat GPT gives like wrong information. Yeah, I tend, I tend to use it a lot, but I double verify everything. Yeah. Dr. Ephra Boris Herm Herma Boris Mid. Yeah. Um. Uh, I think the. Uh... The newer versions of ChatGPT and Bing actually highlight their sources as well. Oh, that's cool. So this is not just based on nonsense. Yeah, and it's also, you know, constantly evolving, so like... It will be a lot better in the future. Yeah. I do think ChatGPT is cool because you can, like, put a lot of nuance in your questions and it will understand you. Mm. So you can be, like, hyper-specific <clears throat> with things, like, you know. Just the way that ChatGPT answers it should never be final source. No, 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 ex exactly. It should never be like, oh, but ChatGPT said it, so it's the truth. Like, obviously, yeah. That's not good, but... Yeah. But in general, it's, like, pretty cool to, like, get, like, very specific answers when it does get it correct. Toaster, why are you not moving? I'm not moving. Yeah, I'm like running around you, and you're not moving. I can see you're lying on stream. I'm stream sniping. All right, this is not level one. Ah, uh, look at the cute zombies. I missed. Darn, my accuracy is too bad. But hopefully tomorrow I won't forget to bring the batteries to the supermarket. Assuming I can go there, that would be good. And then, yeah, when I get to live in my new apartment, I'll, uh... It's not like I use batteries that often. So, you know. Yeah, I use that most when I have the Xbox 360. Yeah, exactly. For my 360 controller, uh, well, I'm going to need a new one for my PSP, assuming my PSP 1000 battery does not work on my PSP 2000. Mm. So I'll have to see. Batteries are scary. Yeah, like, it was some weird things with ChatGPT, I was, like, asking about the skateboarding minigame in Metal Gear Solid 2 Substance. Because Substance has that minigame, and the regular MGS2 does not. Just, like, asking, like, 
can I access the minigame from the start? And for some reason, ChatGPT was saying that no, you have to collect 100 dog tags. Even though that was not true in the end. I'm just curious, like, where the fuck does it get that info from? Do I need 100 dog tags? <laughs> I mean, you, you can actually correct its information. Yeah, I did do that. Acknowledges it. I did say it in the end, like, like it's not true, and then it was like, oh, I apologize, and you are correct. Like, it's been quite some time that ChatGPT says, yeah, you are correct, I am wrong. <laughs> mm. Yeah, technically, yeah, exactly, Moosey. I was just curious where the fuck it gets the 100 dog tags requirement from. Mm. I mean, there are probably other things you unlock with 100 dog tags, but those things I didn't mention. I just mentioned the skateboarding minigame. Not like the bandana of infinite ammo or something. Which is probably something to unlock with dog tags. Damn. You threw a grenade? Yeah. The, like it exploded the moment I shot in the head, so it was like... It, it looked like the head of the zombie I shot was filled with TNT or something. Pretty funny. But yeah. How are they... Digging themselves out of the tiles? Dark facts came after a sequence of other words. Found in the sequence of relative words. Okay. Yeah, hopefully ChatGPT will be more accurate in the future. I mean, at this point it's more ac accurate than most things that's harder than those. Oh yeah. <laughs> but yeah, just, you know, always smart to double check for sure. But, you know, also depends on the topic, like, if it's just a game question, it's not the worst thing to get given the wrong information, because it's just a video game, it's like, oh. But yeah, if it's like more serious stuff, then definitely, uh, make sure you, uh, Hans. Hans. Oh my god, there's like more zombos here. Ah, killed Hans. Yeah, that's pretty cool. You can do so many things with uh, Chad GPT. I like making lists of shit. Like, for example, like, give me all the Battlefield games that have a single-player campaign and list them for me on release order. <laughs> Stuff like that. Oh. So I can get, like, a nice overview of shit. And, uh, you know, more simple questions like, like, is, is this game on this platform different in terms of levels than this game on the other platform? Because nowadays, yeah, the games are the same across multi-platforms, but back then, you know, between like PS1 and PS2, those kind of generations, games would have bigger differences between platforms. Or I also use it like for like other like information things like, like uh, you know just 
like what are like the negative what were like the criticisms of this game you know and then like it searches through a lot of like reviews and shit and sees like what the game was criticized for hmm. i found nazi gold Ooh, gold like you know for example i i use like like oh what was Fear 3 criticized for, or I ask, like, what's the difference between Fear 3 and Fear 1 and 2, and stuff like that, to give, get, like, a general idea. <laughs> or Dead Space, I also ask some questions, or... I ask some questions about, like, comparing the puzzles in Resident Evil to Silent Hill. Oh yeah, you know, it's also pretty good for, like, like, uh, asking, like, food-related things, like what kind of minerals and vitamins are in this food, stuff like that. Because hmm. I'm pretty sure ChatGPT has, like, an easy time figuring that out, like, what kind of minerals are, like, in a specific fruit, for example. Yeah, most of it is like public knowledge on most yeah. sites. Yeah. And sure, I can find it on websites through Google as well, but with ChatGPT, mm. it's just quicker. You don't need to extra click on things and whatnot. Yeah, with Google, you have to swift through a, a lot of garbage because half the first links are like sponsored. Yeah. Yeah, but that's, you know, that's always with internet, looking things up on the internet. Not just chat GPT. Like, most things you'll read on the internet, you cannot take as a final conclusion. Especially now with a lot of misinformation going rampant. Jellies! Owner. Ah, my aim. Oh, come on. Stop moving your head. Shot off his arm. You know what that means? No. He's mostly armless. You don't like dad jokes? 
What you looking at? I'm trying to find a wine bottle. Oh, I have one in my room. Oh. Do I have aim on my <laughs> window? <laughs> that lady has a glass in her hand or a goblet or something. a bit unknown when I'm gonna get my apartment because mm. it just depends now on like um. I don't know what it's called oh now I'm getting a lot of like Modes. Uh, like we have something called uh, I guess social town team which is like basically in your town there's like a place where you can like I guess get help and whatnot I don't know And through them I got like my coaching and stuff. Mm. And there's like other like official crap that goes through them, I guess, but um Yeah, basically uh when I move to a different apartment they have to like check my income. Mm. And my coach has already like sent all the documentation that's required. So now they just gotta like validate and verify it and stuff and then um, after that is verified and accepted and whatnot like I'll be able to like sign some more documentation. Mm. Does my microphone sound different yet? I'm not sure if like. Like in comparison to before? Yeah, like both on stream and on Discord, like because my room is slightly emptier, so there's like more echo potentially. Um, maybe. I haven't really thought of it. Lucy hasn't noticed anything, okay. Uh, mm. It's not that big of a difference yet, but it's a little bit emptier. But yeah, like, the emptier room you have, the more echoey it becomes, and... I have had, the uh, Like, in the past, I do know that... I've had people, you know, like, a long time ago, when my room was, like... Like, I remember... One time I had a mess in my room, and then I cleaned my room, and then someone said, Wow, your microphone sounds a lot more echoey now. <laughs> I had that once, after cleaning my room. <laughs> but yeah. As long as the quality is all acceptable, because if it's not, then just let me know. Hmm. That doesn't sound fine. With, uh... <laughs> encourage messiness. With the exception of, like, shitty, uh, Blue Yeti quality. <laughs> but again, like... <clears throat> different arrangement of the same items, yeah, exactly. 
when I get like all my stuff, like like my income should increase on in my new apartment. Oh yeah. Because like the Netherlands is stupid, and it's like the more people you live with in one house, the less like support money you get. Oh. Mm. Yep, Netherlands is stupid like that. So it doesn't take into account like the uh, su sum of income, like like what the uh, household gets in total for like each person. No, not really. But it's like, you know, like, when you have, like, a certain reason to not have a job, be it, like, a health reason or something, usually mm. is the case, that you don't have a job, you get, like, money from the government or whatever. Mm. Or the township, or I don't know what it's called. Like, support money. So I get that because I don't have a job because I have, like my health thingies like the uh different health problems i have both physically and mentally mm. um so i get like monthly money but because i live together with my mother who also has her own health problems so she also gets her monthly money so like it both basically our income gets nerfed because we live together so we have to, like, use both our money together to get by. Whereas when I leave and go live on my own apartment, I'll get more money. Like, I think mm. now, monthly, around 800 euros I get. Okay. Mm. And if I'm gonna live on my own, I'll probably get more like 1100-ish. Hmm. Uh, so the rent for the apartment is it uh, like a reduced cost as well because it's uh, like appointed by the government? Um, yeah, there's something called uh, is 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 it is subsidian? I don't know. Subsidy we call it here, but I don't know if that's like an English word for it. Mm. Subsidy or something, but yeah, we have something called huur subsidy. Which is basically like support funding for like paying your rent, which is I think 50% of the rent you have to pay. Yeah, subsidiary, thank you, Moosey. So I get like a rent subsidiary if when I go live on my own, which should be around 50% of my rent. Mm. Or subsidize, yeah. Uh, it's just hopefully, uh, yeah, if everything's gonna go better, you know, I need to, like, buy some crucial things, like a new bed, uh, a fridge, you know, washing machine, stuff like that, you know, the bare basics that you need. Ah, so the apartment is pretty much bare bones. Yeah. It's the only thing I get for free is a floor. Oh, hmm. And... Well, I, of course, like a working shower and stuff like that, and uh, I do get a gas stove as well. Hmm. Well, that's decent. Yeah. I'm sorry to hear that, Moosey. For the last ten or so years, I've been sleeping on a mattress on the floor. Oh, it's a comfy. Do notice any drawbacks with it? Like, bad back or anything? Uh, I have bought, like, an extra mm, special mattress on top mm. to improve, like, the quality, but... Sleeping is mixed. Sometimes I have good nights of sleep, sometimes bad. 
God, that really sucks, Moosey. I'm, I'm still lucky enough that even when I won't have stuff in my new apartment, like my coach and colleagues and stuff, like... Because it's like their works place, because it's like their, like, apartments, basically, from, like, the organization. It's gonna be like a protected living, they call it. Um, but I'll be able to, like, temporarily use, like their, like, washing machine and stuff like that. And at least missing a fridge is not the worst thing, because I do have a freezer that I got, like, from my grandparents when they passed away. So, you know, I can still just freeze most of my stuff and then just, like, you know, take it out of the freezer. X amount of hours before I make food, so... Mm. It's, it's not the worst thing, and yeah, I do have like a mattress in the attic that I can take, and just, yeah, temporarily sleep on a mattress, I guess, so... But yeah, I'll, I'll... it'll hopefully in the end be better for me to just have my own apartment. Get more healthy as well with... more movement. I'm already feeling more energetic since a few days ago that I've started to actively pack stuff. You know, I'm like constantly packing stuff, lifting boxes downstairs. So I'm just getting a lot more movement. And ironically enough, I feel more energetic because of it. Mm. And I will hopefully also lose some weight down the line. But again, my first priority when I get my new apartment is just, yeah, get all the basic necessities. And... Yeah, exactly, Moosey. And yeah, after that, hopefully I'll be able to upgrade my streaming hardware. So, like, my microphone and my cam, which are, like... Pretty shitty quality. <clears throat> but it's so hard, right? When I'm at the beginning, when you're so used to not moving much, getting like out of that lazy rhythm, actually starting to spend some energy and become a bit more active. But it's yeah. all a matter of motivation for a person. Yeah, especially when you've been in the comfort zone of uh, not being lazy, but like comfortable at not putting in effort. Yeah. And like now that I'm getting my apartment soon, my motivation went from zero to a thousand. Mm. So it's like, you know, I've been pushing mm. myself over the limit on certain days because the last few days I didn't stream at all like I streamed yesterday but before yesterday I didn't stream for like three or four days or something because I was just packing and sure it was sad I was missing streaming very much but it was good for my health even though there were moments where I pushed myself over the limit which was not very healthy Sadly, I won't be able to stream off my phone yet, because my mic is broken on my phone. And I still need to pay 
the rest of my current phone for like, I'd say three quarters of a year. But after that, if I might be able to renew and get a new phone again, I'd be able to do like streams off my phone. But... Can you still make calls with it if the microphone is broken? That's the weird thing. The microphone works during phone calls. It just doesn't work during like video recordings or apps. Which is so weird. So maybe it's not even the mic that's broken, maybe there's like a weird permission setting that just blocks all permission from the apps, I don't know. Yeah, it sounds like it. Cause like I can't I can't even like open my camera and just record video and it's like oh no audio. <laughs> maybe I should ask chat GPT. <laughs> How to fix my phone. No, I don't want MP40. Where'd my shotgun go? Is he? No, it's here. What? Shotgun where? You're standing on it. Oh. Thank you. Um. But hey, maybe I can, like, get some cables to extend, like, my microphone and camera. And, like, maybe set it up in a way that I can, like, still, like, stream, like, in the kitchen and do a cooking stream or, like, a... Oh, fuck, now I accidentally switched my pistol. And, like, Lego building streams, that would be cool as well. Like, some of the bigger... Some of the bigger uh, sets, or just any sets. I, I definitely don't plan on like having every set I own built at the same time, especially because like the apartment I'm going to, I'll only live for like three years there. Yeah, so what's the plan like after three years? Um, then I can get a new apartment with like like urgency priority because there's like a so pretty much during that three year gap you will be on like a waiting list well i'm already on a waiting list but the waiting list is unrealistically large because of the housing market is fucked up here mm. if i were to wait for my turn it'll probably be more than 10 years which is not healthy considering I'm 29 years old. But there's something called like an urgency thingy which can be like health related reasons. And uh, stuff like that. But they denied that for me because I currently live with my mother. Oh yeah. And ignoring the fact that I need, like, to live on my own to, like, be able to properly learn to take care of myself. But... I'm guessing it's also good for your mother that you're moving out, like, income-wise. Yeah. She's getting a bigger cut. Exactly, that as well. But because I won't be living with my mother anymore, and instead in the, like, assisted protected living thing situation, mm. their, like, rules are, like, you know, max three years. So after that, they kind of won't be able to deny me to give me, like, an urgency for, like, an actual apartment, which basically will, like, give me priority. God fucking damn, I can't aim for oh. shit. At least they ran to you. <laughs> mm. But yeah, uh, I'll just have to see if I get like a bigger apartment eventually and then maybe I'll be able to like 
put more LEGO sets together at the same time. And if not, if there's some LEGO sets I won't like anymore, I can always sell them, of course. I mean, it can also be very, very healthy to be uh, on your own for three years. Getting a taste of it. Yeah, yeah. It's all, all a good thing. It's also a big difference because, like, my current... Like, uh, most of the stuff I own is in my room, and my room is just too small, right? That's why it's a mega mess. I can't move because I just have too much shit. Mm. And a lot of shit is just stuff I couldn't find, so I couldn't, like... ...find or grab things because there's just everything in the way. Like, you know, the Lego I wanted to show in my stream. I couldn't show it because I couldn't reach the table because there's too much shit in the way but because now I've been packing most stuff uh, I made some room so I can actually grab it obviously my mother temporarily has less room downstairs now because there's a lot of boxes but when I move out I'll take those with me of course and I'll have a better overview of all the stuff I own and maybe there is some stuff I'll give away or sell. Because, you know, when you have an overview of all the shit you have, you can actually kind of gauge better, like, what stuff do I still need, what stuff do I not need. Because there's, like, a lot of, like, gaming collectibles I have and whatnot, and... Yeah. I was, about, I was about to look. You stole it. Maybe there's a bottle on that blimp. Or maybe there's a bottle on the moon. <laughs> but yeah, it would be cool if I get to lose some weight. And, uh... Just generally do more physical training, maybe build some muscle mass in my new apartment. Again, because I'll have more space for exercise, I can like set up like watching YouTube videos while exercising and stuff like that. Do you also have like a fitness center close by? Uh, no, but I prefer to just train in my own apartment. Mm. Just so that weather cannot affect my schedule. And I can just stop whenever I'm at my limit. And I don't have to, like, walk back home or go back home. Mm. And it's not like I want to become a bodybuilder or anything. And just, you know, have some weights and do some, like, training and, you know... It's just nice to have, like, the capability to just train a bit in my own apartment. Mm. Yeah, exactly. And that saves money. <laughs> uh, you know, just getting a little bit healthier, like, you know. Just, uh, just having a bit more of a healthy lifestyle. Uh, I love swimming in general. Swimming is so fun. Even though I'm bad at swimming. Bonk. He's bleeding from the head. <laughs> wow. Hopefully, uh, yeah, when I get healthier, I'll have more energy to take care of myself and keep everything clean. And it also helps with building a better self-confidence. Maybe I'll find a new girlfriend. Oh. It's not like I necessarily need a girlfriend, but, you know, it's not like I wouldn't be against having one, again. 
because after my ex, I didn't want a girlfriend for like many years. But it's been like seven, eight years or something now, so. It's like, you know what? If I meet the right person, I'll be open for it. And uh, it's sad because like the last uh, girl I was dating, she was super nice. Had such a fun time, but yeah. At least she had her own problems. And she was not willing to keep dating because of that. Which is so sad because I still really think, you know, like, again, just based off the shorter time I knew her, of course, that I could have been something very nice. But, you know, as they always say, plenty of fish in the sea, but. Hmm. In the you Netherlands. Keeping in touch with her? Not really. Hmm. I mean, we haven't blocked each other or anything, but you know. I did delete her off Facebook. Hmm. Because I just. Just like a reminder. Yeah, exactly. If I see like her posts and shit, I just keep getting reminded and shit. But I didn't block her. Like, if in a few years she's, like, wanting to try dating again, you know, I'd give her a chance. And, you know, having more energy, maybe I'll be able to go out more often. Because I'm not really a person who likes going out. But, you know, it's been so many years since I went like to a bar or something and mm. concerts I go less to compared to in the past so I'll have more energy to go to concerts and stuff meet new people and yeah. holy fuck my shots are bad No updates yet on Space Marine 2, right? I uh, don't think so. I only have to check. Because I thought it was working. I thought it was coming out this year still, but I'm not sure about that anymore. Mike. I rarely get excited for new games, let alone AAA games, but Space Marine 2 looks good. Mm. And I loved Space Marine 1. I just, mm. um, do you know where to go? Mm, no. I saw a safe house door, but I couldn't open it. Yeah, we need to find like another key fragment. Oh, okay. Well, most of the other games I'm excited for are indie games. Like, just checking my Steam wish list. Mm. Um. Oh, 
now sorted on this count. Let's sort on rank. Uh, yeah, first place on my wish list is Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2. Second place, Divine Frequency. Which is like a GZ Doom engine game with like horror ish vibes. Hmm. Coltic, I have on third place. That one's actually already out, I believe. Which is like a very cool, like, it reminds me a bit of Blood, the game. Hmm. There's also a game calming Octo FPS Fallen Aces, which is fucking good. Factorio and Project Zomboid are coming out with significant content. Nice. Factorio, I believe that game pretty much never goes on sale, but that game looks very good. Mm. I've heard everyone say it's like addicting, so. Yeah, that's pretty much why what's kept me from buying it. Never on sale. Yeah. I mean, I'll probably buy it one day full price, but yeah, it's mm. just. It's not like it's not worth it for me to buy full price, but it's just I have so many games that, yeah, I might as well just buy games on sale. Yeah. You know, I respect that choice of Factorio. Um, Tony Ox Pro Skater 1 plus 2. That's just a very personal thing. I just love the Tony Hawk games. So. It was like, the Tony Hawk games are so fun. Um. A Medieval has a DLC, the Black Labyrinth. Iron Fury Aftershock came out October 2nd, which is the Iron Fury DLC. Salako comes out, which is like kind of like System Shock ish. Like other games Holston, Necro Fugitive, Project Warlock 2, Hollow Body, Fortune's Law Run, Supplies. Uh, of course, from software games Sekiro, Dark Souls 3. Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga also. <clears throat> Power Wash Simulator, Forgive Me Father 2, Elden Ring, Raft, Trepang 2, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Octopath Traveler. There's like so much shit. Subnautica Below Zero. Yeah, you know, it's it's fine if a game gets constant updates, you know, I, I'm fine with it increasing in price. It's fair. At least for indie devs. Mm. You know, like if you look at a game like Terraria as well, that game has gotten so many fucking updates. It's like crazy how many updates that game has gone. Isn't that game like closing into like 10 to 15 years old now? Probably. But it's really good, Terraria. Mm. So fucking good. I also made like a list of games I probably want to play in November. Oh yeah? Yep. I, I definitely want to revisit Bloodborne. Down the line. Uh, there's also some other games. I don't know if I can alt tab this game to look at the list, but... Like Terraria meets Room World, often in sale for five. Oh shit, I gotta look that up. Ghoster can carry me for a few moments. Yes. Nessus. Would be surprised if I already have it on wish list. I do have it on wish list. Mm -hmm. Oh, spider. Oh, it's like top down. Which reminds me of that one farming game. Fuck, what was it called? Like the freaking most popular farming game on PC. Stardew Valley, yeah. I bought that game actually like a year ago. But I haven't played it yet, but I heard it's fucking good. I heard Stardew Valley is so fucking good. 
I brought up the list though of like some games I might be playing like in November or December. So yeah, I got Bloodborne revisiting. Again, like I'm assuming a part of my frustration was probably because my dog passed away when I played it. So I was like more emotionally uh, fragile to say the least. Um, and yeah, from soft games are definitely high on my list. Uh, what else I got? Dragon's Dogma looks pretty oh, yeah. good. I have that. Pick, I picked it up in a humble bundle or something not too long ago. It looks like also like kind of like Souls-like meets like uh, RPG-ish. And the games we just spoke about at full price are the price of AAA games at 50% off. Give you the time and satisfaction of four AAA games. I agree, Moosey. Tr indie games is where it's at. Yeah. Again, it's not like I don't find games at full price not worth it or anything. I think it's worth it. It's just I have so many games that... I might as well save money because I'm never in a rush to play a certain game. <gasps> 15, 17, 18. 18 kills with one grenade, holy shit, that's efficient. Dave the Diver. I heard that game slaps. That was like a recent hit indie game. I haven't bought it yet though, but that looks fucking good. I love underwater games, so. Like, underwater and outer space. I love the, those themes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I'm used to Factorio, just always gonna be, yeah, it's full priced. It's fine. I'll just see whenever I'll be like absolutely in the mood for it. But I have like 2,000 games on Steam, so. Um... I was also thinking to go back to Borderlands 2. Mm. I've never finished that game, but it's a very good game. Um, Elite Dangerous, I thought about going to play. Because I have that lifetime membership thing from the premium beta, so I get all expansions for free now. Mm. Um, Tony Hawk's Proving Ground. That's basically the next Tony Hawk game I need to play. Um, and Max Payne 2. As I know, Max Payne is getting a remake in the future, I believe. And Max Payne 1 is classic. Max Payne 2 I haven't ever finished yet, though. So those were at least some of the games I listed down. But it's not, you know, it's not just that's only going to be those games, you know, there's always going to be... The main thing of games I stream will always be whatever I'm most in the mood for, but, you know, those are some of the games that kind of caught my attention. Mm. <clears throat> Now, are you gonna keep doing like a like a voting system like you did for Halloween? Oh no no no, that's just a temporary thing to Strongtober. Mm. Unless you really like the voting system. But 
Yeah, I mean, if you want to do, do like a big voting system once a month. Or like a, a, every big season, like for Christmas or something. Yeah, like, the, the thing is like as well that if I have like voting system, I still need to choose what games I put in the list to vote. And with Halloween, it's like, yeah, okay, right. Horror games, obvious choice. But I also wanted to add my own mix to it because October is also my birthday. So that's why I also added the childhood games category for some variation. Um, but yeah, you know, I could always also do, like, if I'm in the mood for multiple games, I guess I could also do a vote. If, and especially if people like voting, then sure. Because if it's, like, beneficial for the people who want to watch me play a certain game more as well, then yeah. Also, Fear Expansions. Mm. Can't forget that, because I finished Fear, which was amazing. Um, but I still need to play the two expansions, which I saved for later, because I just wanted to yeah, play something else for variety after I beat the main game. And, you know, always... You know, because like the main thing is what I'm in the mood for, my mood always changes. So, random games can always come and go. Plus, I'm still very close with finishing Gran Turismo 4. Hmm. The only things I think I need to do to finish it is two 24 hour races. And I'd love to do that. But the main thing that's kind of keeping me from doing it is uh, I need to keep my PlayStation 2 turned on for multiple days. And my PlayStation oh, 2 yeah. makes noise. And that's not the most comfortable noise to sleep with. Mm. But if I get my own apartment, my PC and consoles will be in a different room than my bed. So I will probably won't hear the noise. So I'll be able to like, you know keep it turned on more easily assuming my PlayStation 2 doesn't die well yeah, that would be cool I don't know if I do eight hour sessions again that was hard when I did the first 24 hour uh, race I did three eight hour sessions and oh boy hmm. those eight hours did not pass quickly Oh. So, I don't know, maybe I'll do like six hour sessions or something, I don't know. Mm. But then it would take more days, of course, but yeah. Let's have to see. Just have to see what happens. Fuck. I didn't know this would happen. <laughs> this random exploding fucking jumbo. I thought we would get attacked, like... Mm -hmm. High gun. Yeah, then on, 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 on Discord I have like a bunch of games as well. That were in my mood. Oh yeah, I also promised light. Well, promises might be too strong of a word, but I did say I'd probably play the uh, Metal Gear Solid 2 Substance skateboarding mini game because uh, she let me borrow her copy of Metal Gear Solid 2 Substance on PS2, which is the only version that has the skateboarding mini game. Should be very nice to play because I've never played that one. 
and uh, uh, I can open my Discord to check the other list of games I was in the mood for. Let's see what my Discord list has. Oh, I can't wait to this. Alright, here it is. Um, right, just keep in mind that some of these games have been on this list for quite a while. Mass Effect 2. I've been wanting to get back to that one day, but that's been like for the last four years or something. I know when I played Mass Effect 1, but it was a very fun Mass Effect 1. But you're gonna see a pattern here with like the theming because Mass Effect is a space game and I just love space games. Um, what else we got? Star Wars Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith. That's such a fun game. Not kill a suicide zombie by hitting his grenade. I didn't even aim for the grenade. Yeah, Star Wars games are sort of high on my priority, so... I want to play Revenge of the Sith, and then probably the uh, Force Unleashed games. And then get to, like, uh, Jedi Fallen Order and stuff like that. Which is basically, like, a Star Wars Souls-like, if you play it on the hardest difficulty. That's what I understood. Uh, Dead Island, with you. Am I being sniped? Yo, there's a snooper. That'll be a snooper. Do I own all Star Wars games I want to play? The ones I currently want to play, probably, yeah. Except the sequel to Jedi Fallen Order, but... Again... I'm never in a rush to buy a game, because I'm like... I still have to play X amount of games before that. Like, for example, if there's Butt Pirate Simulator franchise and I want to play all five of the Butt Pirate Simulator games, you know, I'll first buy one and play one. Not gonna rush buying two, three, four, and five if I haven't played one yet. Maybe I'll buy two as well, but, you know. Yeah, but pirate similar twenty twenty three. But I'm always like, oh, I don't need to buy it yet because I haven't played the previous games yet. So like Jedi Survivor, for example, it's like I got Jedi Fallen Order for free, I believe, on Twitch Prime. I guess technically not free, but you know what I mean. It's like you know. I still want to play Force Unleashed and Revenge of the Sith, so it's like, I don't need to buy it yet. That's a lot of Zombos. Fanatical bundle, old Star Wars games. Oh. Uh, yeah, most Star Wars games I don't have are probably like older console games. In terms of PC Star Wars games, I pretty much own most of them. The only one I don't own on PC is Jedi Survivor, I think. The rest of the Star Wars games would be like older ones on like different consoles, like on Sega Genesis and SNES and whatnot. And like maybe arcade. But 
but um, yeah, on Steam I pretty much own almost all Star Wars games. Oh, fuck my ammo. Uh, what else do I have on my list? Literally, as I want to go over the list, my screen turns off on my phone. Uh, Lego Pirates of the Caribbean. Just because Lego games are cute. Casual fun, collect-a-thon games of like cool movies. Ah, oh, yeah. Battlefront 2, yeah, that I played the fuck out of that game back in the day. Galactic Conquest, holy shit, that was a good mode. Power Battles, PS1. I have not played that, but I do have that game on PS1. I got that one from Light, actually. Like a year ago, she gave me a bunch of PS1 games she scored. And including that one was Jedi Power Battles. So I do have that game. Is it any good? It is fun, according to you. Oh, shit. I should bump up my priority for playing that, then. Because, yeah, I do have that game physical. Like, I... Oh, no, wait. I wanted to say I have it right here, but no, it's packed in the box downstairs. I also have Star Wars Bounty Hunter as well on PS2. This last month, someone was able to give you the title. Oh, nice. Nice, that's good to hear. Uh, now we're in 12 minutes for this level. We got 4 out of 5 gold bars. Ooh, nice. Not bad, only one bottle though. So sir, you need to do a better job at finding the bottles. I'm trying. <laughs> you play like a rental, I had a lot of fun. And beat it. Take the review with a grain of salt. Alright, fair. Demonic forces have barricaded the U-Bahn subway tunnels that stand between <clears throat> you and salvation. You must venture into them and brave the unspeakable horrors they contain if you are to find a way out of Berlin. We're on the subway to hell. What the level was called. Uh, what else do I have on the list? Uh, Sniper Elite, the original. <laughs> no one talks about it. Well, hopefully I'll play it soon then. Maybe maybe I'll play it before uh, Revenge of the Sith then. Oh, I never play games off stream anymore most of the time. I'll just play it on stream. Like, like I'm like, if I'm gonna play a game, I might as well stream it. <laughs> That's kind of how it is, so. Like, off stream, I only boot up like casual games that I can just play while like listening to YouTube or something. Yeah, off stream you only play uh, Division, collecting Echoes. Oh, I've already finished that some time ago. I used to get like Caliber dailies. Hmm. Battle Pass ended today. And I bought like a little bit of things and I got like 600k credits or something, so I bought like a couple more plebs. Oh, nice. I got like 20 plus loot boxes. With like skins. But yeah, original Sniper Elite. Definitely gonna play that. Uh, Dead Space 2. Well, I already played that, so I can check that off the list. 
Blasphemous. That's like a indie 2D Souls-like I heard, which is very good. Even got a sequel recently. Um, the Metro games, Metro 2033. That's on my yeah, list. Fun games. Blasphemous is probably better than Jedi Power Bombs. <laughs> yeah, Metro, because it's like a very dark atmosphere kind of game, so... You only played Metro Exodus. Fair enough. I heard good things about the first two Metro games. Exodus I'm less familiar with. Uh, yeah, Tony Hawk's Proving Ground again. Both Board Max Pain 2, Borderlands 2, Elite Dangerous, yeah, so some of the games uh, that were on my other list. Wow. But yeah, I probably also want to get more into the other Resident Evil games. Five and six, it's gonna be fun. Punching the boulder, yeah. Mm. Oh, fuck, I'm getting in the mood for unhealthy snacks. If I'd, if I'd live on my own apartment now, I'd like put some shit in an air fryer. <laughs> But to be fair, like, my sleeping schedule will probably change when I live on my own. And it'll be more like going to bed at midnight-ish, hopefully. <laughs> nice, Moosey. Air fryers are nice. <gasps> oh, damn. Eggs and potatoes. I love eggs. But there's always so many games that I need to play. It never ends, the list of games. And there's also plenty of games I need to go back to, like Fallout New Vegas. And like, the millions of games we've started to play together and never finished. Like Ember, and uh... Oh yeah. The millions of games. Yeah, and you, you bought The Vision 2 for me. I have to play all the games. I kind of feel weird about Division 1. We, we put in like quite a bit of hours into it, but it didn't feel like we played a lot of like main missions. <laughs> you think? <laughs> Ember, is, Ember is one of those silly fun games that are like magical co-op. Like, I definitely wouldn't play it single player, but, you know, it's just one of those games that... Mm. Uh, like, I hate saying it, like, oh, but it's fun with friends, because it's like, yeah, watching paint dry is also fun with friends. Having cancer is more fun with friends. But, like... <laughs> I mean, it's true. If you have cancer, would you rather have friends or not have friends? Like it's... Can I give you a cancer so we can be cancer bodies? Um. 
But like, <laughs> you know, it's like uh, some games are just designed in that co-op way where it's like, you know. Like, I don't want co-op to be a crux for a game. But just like, you know, just like in a positive, more positive way. And I think Ember is like one of those games. Like, yeah, it's just nice, silly fun. Just running around with a f with friends in like a burning building and shit. Like, I hate Dark Souls 2 for the most part. Kind of. But I would be willing to replay it if I'd be playing it co-op with someone. <laughs> That's what, like, another streamer I know, uh, Camel, you know, he said the same thing, is like, Dark Souls 2 is only like a good co-op game. <laughs> I kinda need to pee. Hope there's a safe house soon. Ah, I think we're safe here. Nah, I'll wait for a safe house. Put a landmine down. I didn't, didn't even know if I needed to, but. Fuck it. I, I do kinda want more of those defensive situations, like in the church. That was fun. Oh shit. Hold on. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> this is fun. Speaking of games, you know, like I've I've mentioned like I love space games and I love mm. underwater games, but I also like kind of like horror-ish not, not necessarily just pure horror, but like horror themed games. Uh, there is a new horror game that is like cooperative space exploration game. Oh, that's very specific. I can find it. Uh! I'm playing traps for hunts. I'm putting it in chat. I'm bleeding. I mean, I don't think like like it's. I'm so mixed on Dark Souls too. It's it's. It's just the like. The gotcha mentality, of the design. Like, a lot of the difficulty doesn't come from, like, the design of, like, having a cool, challenging encounter, but most of, like, just cheap traps and, like, getting grouped, or getting, like, surrounded by groups of enemies that you can't really handle, like, that's, like, some of the main issues I had. Other than, like, oops, wrong button. Other than, like, Hitbox issues and uh, boss runs that were bullshit. Mm. But there were some very good bosses of Dark Souls too. It's like getting to like Blue Fume Night was bullshit. From the bonfire to Blue Fume Night, oh, like the dumbest shit ever. Uh, and frustrating when I get hit by, when I don't get hit physically but i still get hit by the attack like that's just you know it's like cheap difficulty bullshit mm. and the same with like the gank squads it's like not difficult for having interesting enemies but more like oh haha a group of enemies surround you get fucked you know the gotcha mentality like camel put it in a good way as well he said it's not you versus the world in Dark Souls, but you versus the designer. And again, not saying there's no fun to be had in Dark Souls 2. I had a lot of fun with Dark Souls 2. 
But there were just a lot of frustrating moments as well. And too many bosses that were also like multi-bosses. That didn't complement each other very, very well. And I'm definitely not the only one. Like, I know Asmongold, he fucking hates Dark Souls 2 as well. And, you know, probably even more than I. Like, again, I'd be open to replaying it if it was co-op with a friend, because... I feel like the game is probably better balanced in that way. When you have big mob groups, you know, you can manage that a lot easier when you have another person with you. So I'd probably be happy to play that together. But yeah. Again, not of course not shitting on any people who do enjoy Dark Souls 2. All power to them. I'm jealous. I, I wish I could fully enjoy that game. But there's just shit I don't like about it. But there's also the difference between base Dark Souls and Scholar of the First Sin. Where the original release I heard was way better in terms of pacing. Like the difficulty built up a lot more natural. Uh, is that like a separate product on Steam nowadays? Or did they just like update it? It's two different versions that you can buy. Hmm. A more in the world was world worse world design, but because of the story of Dark Souls one, it made me constant wonder what the parallels to the Dark Souls one story was. Hmm. I'm jealous. I wish I could have that same experience, Moosey. Because for me, the world felt much less believable. Just because the the areas weren't connected as well for me. Like it was just very weird how well, some areas connected to each other. Whereas in Dark Souls 1 I had those areas that you could far away see like another area you've previously been and that gives you like that sense of scale and size. But yeah. I do really hope maybe one day I'll go back to Dark Souls 2 regular version or you know playing co-op with Toaster maybe. And maybe I'll be able to appreciate it more. Yeah, that's also fair. Uh, whereas I wanted more like Dark Souls 1, and you're fine with it being more different. Whereas I would have just preferred more of the interconnectedness. That's what I really loved about Dark Souls 1 as well, as the backtracking, constantly revisiting areas. I also really didn't like that you instantly get fast travel in Dark Souls 2. I mean, I'm not gonna complain about the things that Dark Souls 2 did innovate on. I think power stancing and shit is very cool that they added that. It's very good. Absolutely. Like, I'm not gonna shit on some of the innovations. It's more like just shit that just, you know, were broken. Some of the things were just unforgivable, like, again... The hitboxes were unforgivably bad sometimes. Yeah. And that's my complaint, like... Yeah, where I would have preferred the worlds to be interconnected more so I could like backtrack more instead of having to rely on fast travel oh I definitely disagree I mean I know there's always gonna be some cases of hitboxes not working perfectly I get that 
But it's honestly hilarious how many times I got teleported onto like a, a sword or a spear from a boss. Like, I get it. I'm not gonna lose my shit if a hitbox is gonna be wonky one time or a couple times. But with Dark Souls 2 it was very consistent that I just kept getting teleported onto a boss's weapon. Or I got hit when it clearly missed. It was like very consistent for me in Dark Souls 2 compared to Dark Souls 1 and Demon Souls. I remember like that one of those first fights. I forgot what the name of the boss was. Um, what's that motherfucker's name? The Pursuer. The Pursuer. That motherfucker. He will do a stab, and you will clearly he will clearly miss you, and then your character will teleport onto his spear. That fucking fucking boss. Last chat was cool. Executioner's chair was pretty okay. Looking Glass Knight was cool. Skeleton Lords, I don't remember. <laughs> Flexile Sentry was pretty cool. But yeah, like... And again, I didn't like the massive focus on double battles, where it's like, oh, two boss fights. Yeah, that's fair, Moosey. I, I prefer playing as like a melee only character and rely on rolls and blocks and there were a couple of dlc bosses that really fucked me as well with the hitboxes yeah and it's not like i don't you know I, i'm not saying they should never make a 1v2 again ornstein and smo in dark souls 1 but that's manageable because one boss is fast, the other is slow. So you have a tactic there of, well, stay away from the big dude and just deal with the small dude first, right? Run away, deal with the small dude. But in Dark Souls 2, it was too many times, just, yeah. But, uh, um, I'm quickly going to go bathroom because bladder full of beer. And I love the healthy discussion, because again, I really want to appreciate Dark Souls 2 more. Hopefully when I revisit it one time, either solo or co-op, I'll be able to appreciate it more. Because again, my mentality is, the more things I can love in life, the better. <laughs> Ooh. Ah. Ah. Whoa, whoa, 
Okay. I hope you didn't die, Toaster. Oh yeah, I did not. You don't love the Ornstein and Smo fight, the fur multi-boss fight, the cider. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not gonna say I loved it either. Again, because I'm naturally not really. I don't enjoy one v twos or one v whatever. I also prefer one v ones. Um. But yeah, like Ornstein and Smo, I got that boss first try, which is funny because it's like one of the most infamous bosses. But yeah, I first tried that boss. It's funny to me. But I just, with Dark Souls 2, just every time I start a new boss, it's like, oh, it's two plebs or three plebs. I just rolled my eyes and I'm like, ugh. You know? Most played game, Gold Wars. Their expansion is called Factions. Mob fest, only hard because there were too many mobs. Didn't feel it in either case. A lot of mobs by like executing the patients of how do I fight this group without enraging the next. It creates a sort of barrier in your arena. Yeah, I can see that perspective. I can see why then it doesn't create a problem for me. Whereas for me, it kind of kills the pacing. Like, I'm not saying I want to YOLO through every area. But I do want to kind of, like, be flexible in the area. As to not be like, oh, I tried to explore a little bit and now I'm being ganked by five fucking enemies. Like, that just annoys the fuck out of me. But yeah. If your focus is more on, like, what you are explaining, then I can totally see why Dark Souls 2 isn't as problematic for you. That's totally fair. Yeah, like, I don't necessarily do one over the other. I kind of do it at the same time. I just go with the flow. You know, I'm gonna, if I see an enemy, I clear it, and if I see an, uh, you know, some loot, I'll go there, like... It's not like I do one over the other, just go with the flow. But I just hate, like, going a little bit too far and it's like, oh, five enemies. <laughs> and again... Um, I'm still open to trying regular Dark Souls 2 instead of Scholar of the First Sin. Because I heard the enemy placement is way more balanced than that one. So I'll, I'll, I'm definitely open to that. But we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, I do. I do know that you also played Scholar, which which does surprise me. So I finished my two beers. I don't have any more beer, but I do have a little bit of wine that I need to finish. I do need to go. I need, do need to end the stream at four a.m. because I do have like semi-coaching thingy tomorrow at like 145-ish. Yeah, I'm also a bit tired. So maybe in another hour for me. Oh, you pleb. Yeah. I have also worked today. Strunk pleb. Yes. I'm just gonna pour in a little bit of wine. Just a little bit. I need to finish this bottle anyway, so. Hmm.
Oh, okay, I'll just pour in the rest that I have. I mean, you know, again, the way I dislike Dark Souls 2 is, you know, not in the way of I hate everything about it. I think there's a lot of things it does good. And I would definitely be lying if I said I never had any fun at all with Dark Souls 2. That would be a complete lie. There's plenty of fun sections. But there's also some bullshit sections. <laughs> but bullshit in the way that makes it me versus the developer and not me versus the world of Dark Souls 2. And in Dark Souls 1 it was more of the other way around in my opinion, but yeah. Maybe, maybe I'll play it co-op with Toaster one day. What do you think, Toaster? Hmm? Could be fun. <laughs> then there's Dark Souls 3. Which I generally heard more praise for than Dark Souls 2. But there, there's some people I also heard still also disliking Dark Souls 3, so I have no clue what to expect with 3. You can never hear Dark Souls 2 brought up without people complaining about and comparing it. I really wish to complain comparing only happens some of the time. Yeah, you know, I, I understand. I understand it's shitty when something you like gets disliked by other people. And again, like, I, I just hope it is clear. Like, I'm not hating on it for the sake of it that... Oh, it's cool to hate or whatever. Because I really want to like the game. It's just I genuinely had a lot of issues with it. Just like I have issues with Bloodborne. Even though Bloodborne is like... In my opinion, fucking overrated so far, but maybe my opinion will change on it when I get back to it. So for me, it's the other way around with Bloodborne. It's like, I know everyone loves Bloodborne. But I just, I just couldn't find it. Like, yeah, it's okay. There's some fun things about Bloodborne, but like, I feel like Bloodborne is fucking overrated. Up until now. Again, I'm open for my opinion to change, of course. Can't talk about it without comparing it. Yeah. That's always the issue with sequels. Do you judge it by f for what it is, or do you judge it for what it is not? But I do think there's, like, also some other, even objective problems. Like, again, the hitboxes. Like, I would really say that those were just, in my, in my experience, more apparent. In Dark Souls 1, I never got teleported onto the weapon of a boss that missed me. And in Dark Souls 2 it happened multiple times. So that's just not really a matter of opinion. In my experience, right? Because I can't speak for the experience of other people. But based on my experience, it is just objectively true that I got teleported onto a boss weapon more often. And when Dark Souls 1 never happened. Not saying there's no bosses that I didn't have trouble with in Dark Souls 1, of course, but... I just get frustrated a lot more when it's like a, ch a way like that. Yeah, exactly, you know. 
that that's what I also understand. Like I can understand if you just happen to play in a way that you didn't notice the problems with the hitboxes. It obviously means that your experience was a lot more positive. You bet Bloodborne is as overrated as Dark Souls 2 is underrated. Yeah, probably. Uh, you know, uh, probably true. Or based on your experience, of course. And for me, it's of course based on my experience. But yeah, there's definitely cool shit Dark Souls 2 did. Like power stancing and shit. I haven't really played with that, but I did kind of see what it's about, and I think thought it was really cool. I'll, I'll have to see how Dark Souls 3 will fare one day. I still got Sekiro to go through and Bloodborne as well. <laughs> Because I do know a person who also didn't like Dark Souls 3. Same complaint was, he said, it's not me versus the world, it's me versus the developers. And that is a very important thing for me. I want to feel that it's me versus the world, not me versus the developers. See, I didn't have it that much with the Dark Souls 1, that's the thing. That's the weird thing, in Dark Souls 1. I mean, I'm not saying I never got frustrated in Dark Souls 1. There were definitely points that frustrated me as well in Dark Souls 1. Definitely want to make that clear. But it's just how much and how often. There's a moment where the butt could tips over, right? I don't understand what it means? Okay. I guess it has to do with the feeling of, like, when you get killed. When you get killed, for whatever reason, is it because it felt like the world you were in did it or was it that you that it made you feel like the developers just like haha i got gotcha. you kind of it's kind of just the feeling you get from the way the game does it to you you know it just depends on how things how traps are implemented and stuff And again, I'm not saying Dark Souls 1 never had that. Dark Souls 1 is not perfect. But what I'm always saying is Dark Souls had less of it to the point where it, you know, didn't ruin my experience. Okay, you don't have that feeling from any Dark Souls game. Yeah, and I did have it in Dark Souls 2. Again, I also had it in moments in Dark Souls 1. But I had it in Dark Souls 2 to a lot more often to the point where it ruined my experience to a certain degree. Because I feel like Dark Souls 1, you know, that's of course the start. So obviously they wanted to make it harder, they wanted to make it more challenging, and there's a certain moment where it just becomes cheaper and, you know. Hmm. 
Yeah, exactly. Everyone, of course, has a different perception. Again, I'm, I'm just jealous. I wish I could enjoy Dark Souls 2 as much as you did. I really do wish. I'm jealous at you. But again, hopefully when I revisit it, it'll be uh, a better experience for me one day. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's like a pure trial and error game. I want to be the guy. Yeah, there should definitely be traps. I'm not I'm definitely not saying there shouldn't be any traps. But I guess it kind of just depends on like how you know, there's just a a, th a certain threshold. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad that it didn't piss you off. Just wish I could share that sentiment. Yeah, you didn't feel cheapness in either one. <gasps> uh. Yeah, that's... That is possible that you have a different threshold for it. Looks very likely. And you know what's also possible? It's also possible that that threshold gets lowered for me because of other problems. Again, because of stuff like hitbox issues and whatnot, and the ADP system. That my threshold becomes lower because I already get like a bit pessimistic from those issues. That's also a possibility. Because everything has an influence on the overall experience. Uh. What do you think, Toaster? You've been quiet. Mm. I've been trying to stay awake. Stay awake. Do you love Dark Souls too? I mean, I haven't really put in enough hours into that game to make it up for opinion on it. Okay. Yeah, so exactly. I would say I'm pretty much neutral to that game. Okay. Except for like the uh, 
like one of the stats is like the iframes. Yeah, the ADP, what I just mentioned. Mm. Yeah, I do definitely dislike the ADP system as well. Yeah, I do think there's some cool things, like again, like the power stancing, the dual wielding shit. That's like very fucking cool. But yeah, I do agree, Moosey, what you say. You know, because, yeah, when you, for you, like you say, Sekiro is too much on rails, you get less patience. And that can ruin your tolerance for other things. So I can totally see that, and that's probably the same way for me. Uh, there's just certain other things that annoy me that I just get more annoyed by minor things. Artorius of the Abyss. I mostly like that fight, except one attack that you couldn't predict if he was gonna do like a roll twice or three times, I believe. That was the only bullshit move I didn't like. Like, he did like three or two rolls, and you could not predict if it was two or three, I believe. Could be wrong, though. But, pro you know, again, not... You know, just to give some props to Dark Souls 2. There's some very good bosses in Dark Souls 2. Ignoring some of the bullshit hitboxes. I think there were some very cool bosses in the, some of the DLCs in Dark Souls 2. Like, there's this one samurai guy that I really liked. But what ruined my enjoyment was the boss run. A.K.A. going from the boss fire to the boss. So, like, going from, like, I guess that's kind of my experience getting ruined. Like, if going from the bonfire to the boss is a tedious task, which was mostly not the case in Dark Souls 1, and a lot more often the case in Dark Souls 2 in my experience, then I'll get more annoyed. Add to that hitbox issues, I'll get even more annoyed. Even though some of the bosses, ignoring the hitboxes, ignoring the boss runs from the bonfire to the boss, were pretty fucking good. One of the DLCs, like that samurai kind of dude, was very fucking nice. There's also another DLC boss, which was very fun, albeit his fucking hitboxes were bullshit, because he would kill me. Even though his sword didn't hit me. Other than that, the boss was fucking amazing. Well... When initially I clear an area, I don't run past enemies. I always clear an area first. But when I want to go from a boss fire to from a bonfire to a boss, I want to do it relatively fast. I'm not saying I should be able to just run past everyone, but I should be able to make it to a boss relatively easy. But if it's a whole task to clear the area and go to the boss itself, that fucking fucks me. That pisses me off. And, uh... I think I did that twice. Clear a whole area. For two bosses, I think for Blue Smelter Demon in the 
ninja dude boss. I, I kept running from the bonfire to just kill the enemies over and over until they stopped spawning. And I wasted like so much time doing that just so I could play the boss normally. And that was fucking tedious. That pissed me off. Because I just had to do it because I just couldn't go to the boss normally. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm also not trying to argue, but just kind of share my experience. And yeah, like, there's definitely some bosses that I really liked in Dark Souls too. Same for Bloodborne, like, I bitch on Bloodborne, but, like, most of the bosses are pretty fucking awesome. The issues I have more in Bloodborne are, like, the rally system being, like, weird over-reliance on countering... And the unfair uh, hunter fights, those are my mostly my issues with Bloodborne, but the bosses in Bloodborne are pretty, pretty decent. And same with Dark Souls 2, I think most of the bosses are good. Just a bit over alliance on like 1v2s or 1v3s and shit. For sure. Oh, that's fair. It's just when I'm on a boss fight, I just want to keep practicing the boss fight. If I die to a boss, the first thing I want to do is get back into the boss fight so I can keep learning the patterns and try again. So if anything halts my progress significantly enough, that pisses me off. Because I'm like, oh, get out of my way, fuck off, I just want to like practice the boss more. <laughs> Honk, honk. <laughs> Did you manage to defeat all bosses, including the DLCs yet in Dark Souls 2, Moosey? Or have you let yet to clear some bosses? The fuck is shooting me? Ah, there goes Steve. Steve. Uh -oh. oh yeah, I forgot earlier I was gonna mention, so I love space games and like underwater games and games with like spooky vibes, but also just atmospheric games in general, like for example Half-Life 1 and 2, right? It's not a horror game, except Ravenholm, but it does have atmosphere, right? That kind of loneliness and shit. I don't know what it is about the Half-Life games, but they just have such good atmosphere. Um, but I also really love World War II games. World War II games are very special to me. So I'll be definitely playing more of those as well. Like. Medal of Honor uh, Resistance or whatever it was called. Underground. On PS1. And some more Medal of Honor games. Maybe some Call of Duty games. Even though 
later Call of Duty games went out of World War II, but still. Up. Ow, 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 ow. That's a lot of zombos. I also want to revisit the Wolfenstein, the newer Wolfenstein games, New Order, and I'm out of sniper ammo. Oh shit! <laughs> I'll try to read your messages as soon as possible, Lucy. Kind of a little bit of a pickle here. I'm getting Sasha grade. That's a lot of zombos you have there. Ow. That's a boss as well. Oh, there's a boss. We're fighting a boss? Yes. Oh. I didn't know that. I haven't played Dark Souls 2 since. Uh, Aztec Temple boss. Did I do damage? Yes. Stuck on a boss that has the uh, bullshit back of the sword hitbox DLC at the bottom of the iron tower and the cells. No. Yeah, that one at the bottom. I really love that boss, except the hitboxes with the big black sword. I love that box. I love everything about that boss. It's just the hitboxes are fucked. That's the thing. That's such a fun boss. I really loved it. Just the hitboxes. <laughs> if the hitboxes would work, I would have beaten it like five times. Because <laughs> I kept dying because, oh, bullshit hitboxes. No, no, don't, don't. I need more ammo, I'm so low. I have no sniper ammo. Place a trap. Get these. I'm sorry, I can't help much. I'm just out of sniper ammo. I'm fighting off skeletons that sadly don't drop loot, I think. Ah. Uh, so lucky to be alive. Oh, Hans. Okay, I got 20 bullets. Oh fuck, Hans. Uh... Tiger, you're not close. Did you get like the item that you can see the tiger? I do think you needed an item to see the tiger. I don't think you'll revisit Dark Souls 2 until you beat 3. Fair enough. You can't see the tiger, okay. So do you not get killed by the boss when it's like he's hitting you even though the sword didn't hit your character? 
Like, are you noticing hitbox issues or not? Not out of sniper ammo again, fuck my life. Oh yeah. But there's also a hidden side area. I'm curious what you'll think about that. In the snow area, there's like a hidden area you can access. I don't want to spoil too much, but... Like, all I can say is, there's a hidden door you probably found that was locked and you needed a key for. Damn it. Yeah, I'm gonna check if there's like the ammo depot somewhere. Uh, over here. Oh, let's get low. Okay, well, all I can tell you, Moosey, in the snow DLC, there is an area that is not at the snow tiger, it's like somewhere else, probably an area you've already cleared. There's a locked door you can find. And if you unlock that door, you can access another extra area that has a boss. Definitely one hard boss though. Because it's technically a co op boss. Because Bark Souls 2 does have a couple co op bosses. And I've still managed to beat all the co op bosses solo except one. I did use uh, NPC summons for one, and that's the one I'm talking about. Yeah, it's a co-op boss that I'm talking about. But even getting to the boss is a pain in the ass. I'm curious what you'll think about it. I don't want to spoil it, but like, holy fuck, it's a pain in the fucking ass to get to that boss. Yep. And trust me, even getting NPC summons there is a pain in the ass. Keeping your NPC summons alive to get there is painful. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just you wait. I, I do really hope you'll go into that area. <laughs> Best shot, Strunky. Kills, Strunky. Revive, Strunky. Highest combo and score, Toaster. Nice. Mm. That patter. Uh, I think I want to call it there. All right. Re really tired. That's okay. Yeesh. 
<laughs> you don't even want to do that, boss. Well, then <laughs> that's your choice, of course. Uh, well, Toaster, I wish you good sleepy time. Hmm? Thanks. Thank you for playing. Hmm. <sighs> Didn't speak that much, but I was really tired of work. Yeah, you're always welcome to speak, but I understand if you're tired that, uh, Yes. It can influence it a bit. Oh yeah, um, it was the game. If you wanted to check it out. Oh yeah, I'll check. Uh, I'll check out the link. I think I did. I forgot if I checked it out or not. Mm. Oh yeah, I added it on my wish list. Nice. With the other two thousand two hundred fifty-six games. Mm. <laughs> yeah, but it was nice. Session. Yeah. Um, so take care to Mosey. Sadly, we didn't get to play level one. It was a little <laughs> no, bit disappointing. No. So. <laughs> mm, take care. Yeah, have a good one, toaster.